We're going to look at how to design forms and write the HTML we need for forms, but without a server-side processing language like PHP or Python, uh, we can't actually make our forms that functional. But we can at least design them so that we uh, can make sure that they're accessible and functional and that sort of stuff. When it comes to forms, the first tag you need to know is the form tag, which looks like this. And that surrounds all of the inputs that people can type into and select and that sort of stuff, as well as the button to submit it. On a form tag, there's two attributes that we have to specify. The first one is action. And this is the URL of where you want this information to be sent. Now, when we're doing, if we were using some sort of PHP stuff, we might want to send it to like form.php or something like that. But today, let's just send it to a page we're going to call thanks.html. So thanks.html, because it's not a server-side processor, can't do anything with the information, but at least it'll sort of simulate how the form might work. The other attribute that we need is called method, and this we should set to post. Now, I'm not going to go into an explanation, but it's just how the information is sent, and it's really relevant when you're going to actually use the information in some way. Now, when it comes to forms, we have a couple things that we really need to have in here. The first thing is an input, so I'll go like that. And the second thing is a button. So we're going to go button, type equals submit, because we want this button to actually send the form. Send. There we go. So we have an input and we have a button. Let's go to our browser and see how that looks. So it looks like this. Here's our input. Here's our send button. Our input right now is pretty generic. There's not much to it. First of all, we need some sort of a label for it. So I'm going to make a label here, like this. Let's say we're going to make a contact form. So I'll make the label name. So I now have a label. I'll go back and refresh. Here's my label, name, and the input. But currently, they're not associated with each other. Ideally, what I want is for the input, I need to give it an ID. Let's just call it name. And then on the label, I need to associate it with that ID using the for attribute. So for equals name. Now we've created an association here like this. If I click on name, you'll see that it selects the input like that. So I know that they're associated. If I was to turn on voiceover right now or another screen reader, it would say something like input name. So it would say that it's an input and then read out the label. If I didn't create this for ID association like this, then the input would actually not read anything out. Uh, VoiceOver would just say input, and you wouldn't know what you're actually supposed to type into there. So this for and ID association between a label and an input is extremely critical for the input itself and for accessibility reasons. So we've created a really, really basic form right here. Uh, if I was to click the submit button, the send button, it would go to my thanks.html page. So let me make that really quickly. <laughs> thanks.html. So here's my basic, basic page. If I put my name in here and, oh, if I can type it, and hit send, you'll see it goes to my thanks page. Now, really what should happen is thanks should be some sort of server-side processor page that will actually do something with the data. But we're not looking at that today. We're just looking at the actual design of the input elements themselves.